take a look at this picture. Do you know what is happening here? Well, let me relate it to you with an example. If on a winter day, you comb your dry hair with your comb, you will notice that after combing, your hair is actually standing out or it is standing up from your head and getting pulled towards the comb. Just like you can see in this picture. Can you tell me what is happening here? Let us find out some more examples. On a winter evening, let's say you come back home from outside and you pull open your woolen cap. Now the moment you pull open your woolen cap, you will notice that your hair stands on the head, much like you can see in this picture. So again, why do you think your hair is being pulled towards the cap? Let us take another example. Let's say you are sleeping on a winter night under a blanket. Now if you take your fingers and rub them vigorously on the surface of the blanket, you will notice that sparks will be flying out. Now why do you think sparks are flying out? Where are these sparks coming from when you are rubbing your fingers on the blanket? All this seems to be very interesting and intriguing, right? Let us get to the bottom of this. In this video, certain properties of matter have been discussed and shown. Here we see that a balloon is rubbed against hair and it is placed near the can. As you can see, the can is getting attracted towards the balloon. You can find that there is no direct contact between the can and the balloon when it is getting attracted. Similarly, if we rub the balloon with fur and we bring it near bits of paper, the bits of paper are attracted. All this is happening because of charges. So let us find out what charges are. Firstly, we shall look into a bit of history and take a trip down memory lane. Now, the concept of charges was first discovered by a man called Thales of Miletus in Greece. Now, he observed when amber was rubbed against fur, it developed some sort of properties by which it was able to attract straw. So, he called amber as electron. Now, almost 2200 years after this, there was no such developments. Now, in the year 1600, a man named William Gilbert in England performed some more experiments with amber. He discovered that when amber was rubbed and brought near any object and not only straw, all of these objects were attracted by amber. So he discovered that these properties are electric and he coined the term electric which is Greek for amber. Now further on, 40 years later, a man named Thomas Brown, although he did not add anything more to William Gilbert's discovery, he postulated that when a material is rubbed with another material, charges are being developed and just like a material is elastic and it has elasticity properties, he mentioned this property as electricity. So in 1736 in France, another man called Charles Dufay performed further experiments. He found that when two objects were rubbed against one another or heated, unless those objects were liquid or gases, they attracted or repelled one another. So since there were two cases, he classified these two objects into two groups and then observed that if two objects were taken from the same group and rubbed, they repelled one another and if they from the opposite groups, they attracted one another after being rubbed. So uh, now we consider two instances. We consider the first instance where glass rod is rubbed with silk and we consider a second instance where ebonite rod is rubbed with fur. Now I already mentioned that when one body is rubbed against another body, charges are developed much like you saw in the case of the balloon hair and can and balloon fur and the bits of paper. Now in both these cases, when glass rod is rubbed with silk and ebonite is rubbed with fur, charges are developed. Now do you think these charges are same or do you think the charges are different? Well, why don't we find out? 
So in this video, we find that a glass rod is being rubbed with a silk cloth. This glass rod is A. Another glass rod is taken and that also is rubbed with a silk cloth. Now what is done is one of the glass rods is suspended from a fixed support and the other glass rod is brought near it. If you observe closely, you will find that these two glass rods repel one another when one is brought close to the other. Now we consider the case of an ebonite rod. The ebonite rod is being rubbed with fur. So in this case we consider an ebonite rod C. We consider another ebonite rod D which is also rubbed with fur. Now one of the ebonite rods is suspended from a fixed support and the other ebonite rod is brought close to it. You will observe that these two rods are repelling one another. That is, they are not coming close together but are moving away from one another. Now we consider a third scenario. Over here, a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth and an ebonite rod is rubbed with fur. Now, one of the rods is kept suspended and the other is brought closer. So the glass rod is suspended and the ebonite rod is brought closer. As you can see, attraction takes place and not repulsion as it was in the previous cases. So why do you think that when ebonite was brought close to ebonite or glass was brought close to glass, they repelled one another? But when ebonite was brought close to glass, they attracted one another? It has been found out that like charges or charges that are similar in nature, they repel each other. And unlike charges, that is charges that are unlike one another, they attract. So in the case of two glass rods or two ebonite rods, the charges that developed on them were like charges. So they repelled one another. But in the case of the glass rod and ebonite rod, the charges that developed on them were unlike charges. So that is why they attracted each other. So conventionally, it has been taken that there are two types of charges. That is positive charge and negative charge. Conventionally, the charge on a glass rod is considered as a positive charge and conventionally, the charge on an ebonite rod is taken as a negative charge. So from our previous discussion, what can we say? We can say that like charges repel as we found out the two ebonite rods when rubbed with fur and brought close to one another repelled. We also saw that when two glass rods were rubbed with silk and brought close to one another, they repelled. So we can say that like charges repel, that is negative repels negative or positive repels positive. We also saw that unlike charges attracted one another. When the glass rod being rubbed with silk was being brought close to the ebonite rod rubbed with fur. So we can say that positive attracts negative. Thus, unlike charges attract one another. So taking a quick recap, we learned that there are two kinds of charges, positive charges and negative charges. Now these charges are conventionally taken as positive for a glass rod and negative for an ebonite rod. We also found that like charges repel one another. That is negative repels negative and positive repels positive. And we also saw that unlike charges attract one another. In other words, negative attracts positive. Much like we saw in the case of the animations where the glass rod being brought close to the glass rod or the ebonite rod being close to the ebonite rod after rubbing repelled one another. But when the glass rod was brought close to the ebonite rod, they attracted one another.